Hey, I would like to welcome everyone to the uh, Extension Agronomy Team October webinar. Uh, this is Steve Lee, Extension Weed Scientist of Auburn University. I would like to talk about uh, using sequential application of uh, synthetic oxygen herbicide and glufosinate for uh, palm amaranth uh, control. This is my PhD student Francis Brown's um, uh, project and I'm going to briefly talk about some of the main findings from last two years. So we conducted field projects in 2017 and 2018 in uh, Henry County uh, and also um, uh, we had a location this year in uh, uh, Henry County as well in 2019. So most of the data you see are actually uh, from the 2018 and 2019 field trials. Uh, we have four applications, small plot uh, research, uh, it's a randomized complete plot design. We apply the different treatments to uh, Palmer amaranth um, that we art artificially seeded. Uh, we, uh, we used uh, CO2 backpack and uh, TTI or TT nozzles calibrated for uh, 20 gallon per acre because we're spraying to pretty dense vegetation. Uh, depends on if we're spraying Liberty or Dicamba or 2,4-D, uh, we'll choose to use either TT nozzle or TTI nozzles. We rated uh, visual injury and also uh, uh, Francis measured the uh, pigweed height uh, two and four weeks after initial treatment. Uh, she also collected pigweed biomass at five weeks after initial treatment. So if you look at the table right here, the major difference between 2018 and 2019 uh, experiment is the average height of the uh, Palmer amaranth. And they differ quite a bit uh, between the two years. So we were spraying at a much larger Palmer amaranth in 2019. So in production, uh, we don't recommend people spray anything above six inches you know below six inches is always the best the smaller the better so these are really the salvage situation that we're looking uh, for uh, rescue treatment to uh, uh, save a crop or save a field from getting uh, ate up by pigweed so we don't recommend people use these treatment on a regular basis uh, we used five different chemicals in our treatment. They were used in different combinations or different sequence. So we used Dicamba, which was uh, extended max in terms of formulation. Uh, we used Rana Power Max, Liberty, Dual Magnum, and this one. All right, you can see the uh, use rate we, uh, 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 we included in the experiment for the last few years. And we didn't use any other rates. Um, during the experiment. We added 1% of class act radon, which is a uh, NIS, and DRA uh, at a half percent to all the dicamba treatment uh, to satisfy labor requirements. So in terms of our, of our treatment structure, we do have a few one-time applications such as Extendimax with Roundup, uh, Liberty with Dew Magnum, and also we had an illegal treatment of uh, Extended Max with Ronda, with Liberty, with Dew Magnum. Uh, this treatment is totally illegal. The label doesn't allow it, allow it, so we just include it for um, uh, experiment purpose. Also, we have Inis 1 with Liberty with Dew Magnum. So these are all the one-time application, and we also have a few sequential application program. So you can see what we spray in the initial application. And then these are what we spray in the follow-up application. The timing between the two applications were either three days, but mostly seven days after initial treatment. So we had some treatment use two shots of dicamba, like this one. We have dicamba first, followed by Liberty at a three or seven days after. We have Elis one with Liberty with Stew Magnum, followed by Elis Stew or the same treatment again or liberty with dew magnum we also had a liberty with dew magnum first followed by extended max with roundup or liberty with dew magnum and a true non treaty check so if we talk about extended max programs all right uh, this gives you an idea how much pressure weed pressure we are um, we were working on these fields are very very weedy they are traditionally weed science uh, research area. So we got a lot of pressure there. All right, looking at Palmer Emerson's visual injury at four weeks after the uh, initial treatment. 
um, there are a few treatment that uh, gave us more than 80% of damage, but most of the treatment um, did not produce satisfactory uh, control, uh, which is well expected because we spray on Palmer that are way too big. All right. Um, we couldn't combine the two year data because year was significant uh, during um, data analysis. So we have to present the data by year. All right. So visual injury doesn't really show much, even though you can have, you know, over 80% injury, but we all know Palmer Amaranth has amazing ability to recover from injury. And then this will give you some idea. Five weeks after initial treatment, we certainly have seen pigweed start to recover, you know, like those healthy pigweeds in both years trial. All right, and one shot is not definitely not gonna do it. Liberty with dual magnum looks even worse just because Liberty is contact herbicide, it doesn't penetrate the canopy very well. Roundup with Extended Max with Liberty with dual magnum, you know, the illegal treatment, uh, it doesn't look impressive at all. So we scientists always talk about tank mixes, tank mixes, but it's not always true that the more you mix, the better control you get. That is wrong. All right, look at the biomass five weeks after initial treatment. We do have a significant year effect, so we have to present the data by year. But if you look at 2018 data, which were represented by the blue bars, we have some pretty short ones, you know, say Roundup with uh, uh, Extended Max, Dual Magnum, followed by Extended Max and Roundup. Or even Two Shots of Liberty gave us a pretty short bar, you know, in 2018. And then we have some really good treatment down here, uh, that Dicamba with Roundup followed by Liberty and Dual Magnum, whether it's the three days or seven days after. Uh, we had almost no Palmer survived after those programs. But if you look at 2019 treatment results, they were not looking good. You know, we don't have very short bars no more just because the pigweeds were much bigger in 2019 experiment. All right, another interesting finding uh, is the uh, grass control. This is nothing new, but 2018 was a wet summer, most you know, mostly in the first part, but 2019 was dry throughout the summer from the start to the end. All right. So this program was a Liberty Dew followed by Liberty Dew Magnum. Uh, all right. Uh, Liberty has never worked great on grasses, but in 2018, we still got some okay grass control. It was not good, but it's at least not too terrible. Versus 2019 treatment, uh, I mean, pigweed didn't get control much uh, in either year, but grasses were a disaster. You know, they were, they were looking like a disaster in 2019 just because it was too dry and Liberty don't like dry condition. It just doesn't work well. Um, so this is the Roundup, uh, Roundup Dicamba followed by Roundup Dicamba program. So in both years, I was able to kill most of the grasses, even considering 2019 being a fairly, fairly uh, dry year. But on um, pigweed, you're not gonna expect too much out of this dicamba followed by dicamba procedure, which I don't really recommend to most of the growers anyway. That puts too much pressure on dicamba. And uh, three, three shots of dicamba is a even worse idea. Don't even try it. Liberty with do followed by Dicamba plus Roundup. In 2018, grass control, it was great. Um, Palmer, not so much. In 2019, Palmer control was still pretty mediocre, but I got plenty of grass left uh, in the plot. All right, so grass control has been a struggle in 2019. This was a good program back in 2018. You know, Dicamba with Roundup followed by Liberty with do. Um, and also, um, if you wait seven days after initial treatment, put out your Liberty Dew Magnum. In 2018, I got all the pigweed killed, pretty much. But in 2019, um, I have plenty of survivors, you know, from this two programs. Um, that that was simply because the pigweed size was way too big in 2019 versus uh, 2018. There's no way you can kill two foot tall pigweed. Um, consistently at all. So this is a general rule of thumb on large pigweed. Occasionally you may kill a few, but consistently that never happened. 
All right, so looking at the percentage non treaty check, uh, I mean, looking at the uh, polymer and biomass as converted by percentage non treaty check. In 2018, we had some really good control with Dicamba with Roundup first, followed by Liberty and Dew Magnum. In 2019, none of those programs were very effective. All right, so that just tells us the value of spraying on time, spraying early when the weeds are small. All right, again, much bigger pigweed in 2019. All right, once you have pigweed being knee high, it's gonna be uh, impossible to kill them all. So hand weeding will be needed uh, if you still want to save your crop. What we saw in our research plots kind of match what I saw in growers field in 2019. You know, all these pictures were taken in 2019 uh, field trips that I made throughout the state. All right, many grass escapes, many pigweed escapes. Pre-emergence didn't work out too well because these are mostly dry land and we don't get rain, those didn't get activated. And it's just hard to kill weeds, particularly grass weeds, when they're you know, in that terrible drought stress. It's just hard to kill them with herbicides. All right, for in this choline, uh, for 240 choline, which is in this one, um, we saw some pretty decent injury in 2018, which were uh, represented by the blue bar. But if you look at the orange bars, 2019 data, we certainly had a drop of visual injury, which was caused by the increased size of pigweed. We were able to combine 2018 and 2019 biomass data, and we do have a few pretty short bars right here, like in this one with Liberty with Dew, followed by the same treatment seven days again, or followed by Liberty with Dew Magnum seven days after treatment, you know, or followed by in this Dew seven days after initial treatment. This all seem to be working fairly well. However, this little amount of biomass of pigweed can still bounce back and occupy a lot more area. We know that because the tolerance of pigweed in the field is zero. All right, looking at the biomass five weeks after initial treatment, combined 2018-2019 data, we do have some program work fairly well. You know, these three with letter C uh, after the uh, number. Uh, these work really well on pigweed control, but still not 100%. There's no way you can kill large pigweed 100%. You're always going to have some leftover that need to be cleaned up by hand or by hole. All right, plot pictures. Elise 1 plus Liberty followed by Elise 2. In 2019, it looked pretty good to me. In 2019, I got plenty of escapes of grasses and pigweed. So the grass escapes match the extent program uh, fairly well you know you're just not gonna get it kill in either one of the system it is one plus liberty plus new magnum followed by the same treatment again uh, really really good looking plus 2018 but not so good looking plus in 2019 all right so environmental stress can put a big effect on weed control and a lot of other things as well yeah, this one Liberty with Dew Mac followed by Liberty with Dew Mac seven days later. 2018, very good pigweed control. Not 100%, but pretty decent. In 2019, it's a food of pigweed plus grasses. All right. So we saw lots of similar story happen over and over again. That just tell us we want to spray weeds, particularly pigweed, when they are small and also uh, when it hasn't rained for a long time you know the field is bone dry it's just gonna be very hard to kill weeds but the good thing is it won't take much water or, or rain to make those weeds active again so if you just rain a little bit to moisture the weeds you probably can get a better control with post-emergent herbicides we also did a greenhouse study to measure the physiological response of Palmer to four different treatment. That's sh uh, actually three different tr treatment as shown right here in this table Extended max with Roundup with Liberty with Dew, which is illegal treatment, and also extended max with Roundup followed by Liberty and Dew seven days later, or Liberty with Dew Magnum first followed by extend, uh, extended max and Roundup later. All right, so we uh, spray those uh, greenhouse plants in uh, uh, with TTI nozzle or TT nozzles. 
Uh, same output, 20 gallon per acre, uh, when the pigweed were 12 to 18 inches tall. So we still spread a fairly tall plants. And we only spread one third of the full labor rate because these are greenhouse plants. They are more sensitive to herbicide. We don't want to have, you know, this treatment kill them completely. All right, we measured a few things uh, related to their, related to their uh, physiology response, such as CO2 assimilation, stomata conductance, dark respiration, PSD efficiencies. All right, these pictures give you some idea about how these plants look like seven days after initial treatment. All right, so we do saw some differences there. All right. All right, looking at the photosynthetic simulation uh, following the uh, herbicide treatment, all right, this tells us how well photosynthesis is running uh, in terms of fixing um, CO2 for, um, uh, for um, uh, hydrocarbons or, um, um, you know, stuff like sugar, starch, uh, cellulose, and all those things. All right, so this line on the top in yellow uh, is non-treaty check all right and then the orange line represents extended max with roundup followed by liberty with steel magnum all right and uh, this one doesn't show much of difference early on as compared to the non-treaty check this sharp drop here was caused by the liberty and it's applied seven days after initial treatment. So Liberty was put on on these plants on the seventh day. So you can see a big drop of CO2 assimilation caused by Liberty. And then the plants start to grow out of the Liberty injury. And by the 14th day after the initial treatment, uh, in terms of CO2 assimilation, we don't see a difference between this treatment and an untreated check. All right, for this two program down here, one is Liberty with Dew followed by Extended Max and Roundup. The other one was Roundup with, uh, it was Extended Max with Liberty with Dew Magnet with Roundup. So both had a Liberty applied up front. That's why the CO2 simulation started at a very low point and slowly work its way up, all right? Dicamba and Ronda was sprayed seven days after initial treatment for this gray line right here, but Dicamba has no effect, almost no effect on CO2 assimilation for this pigweed. And plus all these pigweed are Roundup resistance. So Roundup don't do anything. So something we learned from these results is Dicamba doesn't really slow down CO2 assimilation much compared to the non-treated plant, but Liberty does. Liberty causes a lot of problems for CO2 assimilation. All right, PS2 efficiency as measured by quantum yield or fluorescence yield. Um, we saw a similar trend, all right? The, uh, the, the yellow line represents non-treated check. The orange line represents extended max plus roundup followed by Liberty and dual magnum. All right, you can see similar trend as the last in as in the last figure. This treatment didn't show up much difference until the seventh day when it got sprayed on with Liberty. When Liberty was sprayed on, and then a sharp drop of quantum yield, which represents the healthiness of PS2 system in photosynthesis. Um, apparatus, you know, in, in um, the whole photosynthesis process, and then slowly recover as time goes by. So Liberty caused problem for photosynthesis uh, system too, as well. For these two treatment, they got sprayed with Liberty first and Dicamba later. That's why we saw quantum yield started low and start to go higher and higher until it has no difference with a uh, non-treaty check. So conclusion we can make is Dicamba doesn't hit photosynthesis very hard, but Liberty does. That's a difference. That's why I say Dicamba, that's why I usually say, that's what I usually say in the uh, uh, extension meeting. Dicamba will freeze the plant, but Liberty is the hammer drop on top of the pigweed, you know, that actually killed it or severe, severely damaged it. All right. Um, so after we measure all the physiological response 
All right, we pull all the leaves off at 35 days after the treatment. And you can see all three treatments sig significantly reduced the uh, uh, leaf biomass as compared to the non treaty check. All right, so we pull all the leaves off. It's almost like we artificially defoliate all these pigweed plants. Because in production, one thing we saw many, many times is Liberty defoliate pigweed leaves and burn the pigweed into a bear stem. But if that bear stem remains alive, it's gonna grow back and regenerate all those leaves. All those new leaves can look smaller and a little bit funky compared to the original leaves. So we simulate this process. We pull all the leaves off, left all the bear stem to regrow. And then something interesting is for these two treatments, you know, for the four-way mix, illegal four-way mix, or the Liberty followed by Dicamba program, we saw no difference of the uh, regrowth in terms of uh, leaf biomass bio that were generated during the regrowth. We let all the bare stem regrow for three weeks. However, for the Dicamba first followed by Liberty program, we saw less regrowth leaf biomass as compared to the non treaty check. So the implication of these data is if we do Dicamba first followed by Liberty later, we probably can hold off this pigweed a little bit longer and they don't generate as much new leaves as compared to some other programs so that somehow explain why this treatment was the best treatment in 2018 uh, study which resulted almost 100 percent fatality on those pigweed all right conclusions uh, we still recommend sequential application that's absolutely the best thing if you have a few larger pigweed you know larger than six or even 12 inches uh, you need to spray that came up first followed by Liberty and that's still the best thing uh, to control those big palmer and reduce uh, leaf regrowth the bigger palmer gets the harder it's gonna be to kill it you saw from the contrast between 2018 and 2019 uh, experiment yeah this one plus Liberty seems to be a little bit more effective on large pigweed it's not because that camera is more effective on um it's not because 240 is more eff effective than uh, that camera it's probably probably because you can combine Liberty with 240 and that causes more damage on large pigweed than that camera alone because you can't do that camera with Liberty mix yet you know we don't have that label yet Drought stress severely impacted grass control for both Liberty and Roundup, as you saw from 2018 and 2019 plot uh, pictures, uh, you know, spray with the same treatment. So in our physiological study, uh, we saw that Kemba had a little effect on photosynthesis uh, and, and, you know, whether it's a CO2 simulation or stomata conductance or uh, it's a quantum yield you know i didn't show the stomata conductance data but it has almost no effect on it liberty greatly reduced the photosynthesis rate and ps2 efficiency though and uh, the concern on spraying sequential treatment on large palmer is those is because those severely damaged palmer still can come back and they pose serious concern for herbicide resistance because if we do this year after year try to kill large pigweed but don't completely kill them and don't spend time or labor or money to pull them out some of those some of those severely damaged plants still produce seeds and maybe one of those seeds carry the uh, mutation and next year we're gonna have a whole lot of resistant plants to that camber that you have to deal with so that's definitely something we don't want to see.